Buonasera, buonasera Gian Maria, buonasera a tutti. Good afternoon and a uh, few seconds we will start really and uh, we need to wait for Paolo De Caro that is our guest for Ernest and Young. Okay, Paolo. Welcome. I think Paolo is disconnected. Um uh, yes, I will. I will. Uh, Could you please resend the link to make sure that is the correct one? Uh, I will send you, and then you can share with Paolo. Yeah. Yeah, Elise, we will record the. Um, let's say the talk not this uh, let's say <laughs> starting moment but the talk will be recorded and also we will uh, as always uh, define a, let's say we, we will uh, do a medium that will uh, let's say synthesize the, the the findings and also the discussion that we will have this evening okay paolo it seems that yeah. you are here now okay yeah 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 welcome paolo welcome giacomo and welcome uh, andrea so hello i think we can start um hi everyone um we will start because uh, we are a bit late sorry because it's five minutes past uh, six um yes the u.s talk uh are available uh, all the ux talk in our medium uh and you can you will find in the medium all the let's say synthesis of the talk and uh, the video uh recorded uh edi past edition so welcome to this uh, 23rd uh, UX talk. Um, I hope this will be one of the last uh, completely on distance that maybe because this uh, format was started uh, uh, fully in presence and uh, now we are uh, thinking in how to go back to presence for someone and also to maintain this blended mode that we learned in this uh, uh, COVID time. So this, this will be also maybe the future of our uh, our talk. Uh, so I will uh, uh, briefly introduce the, the talk uh, with uh, Andrea Gaggioli and then I will give the floor to uh, Giacomo Rozzo from Il Prisma and uh, Paolo De Caro from Ernest uh, Young AI uh, that uh, will uh, discuss this uh, really challenging topic uh, that will be the tease. Uh, the topic of uh, future of work. So I think just to start this discussion that we haven't, uh, let's say, final solution on this, but uh, uh, for sure uh, we need to uh, discuss this situation and we need to design, we need to take part to this, uh, uh, let's say, discussion with, uh, let's say, quality. Uh, I'll ask uh, common, do you copy? If there is any problem in uh, hearing the audio or see the video, please let us know by the chat and we will uh, do our best to recover. Um, then uh, this UX talk can be, uh, let's say, uh, followed in our uh, channels. And I said before, there is the, our medium uh, where all the talk are, uh, let's say, synthesized and it's possible to access to last edition videos. Um, you will found uh, four or five edition because uh, before the pandemic we were fully in presence and we had not chance to share the video so thanks to the pandemic now we can also uh, we learned new tools and also we have the opportunity to share with you in a different way um, this kind of talk so i'm venancio arquilla i am the scientific director of the master user experience psychology co-director with uh, andrea gaggioli i am the design part of this master and i am also founder with david jenko of the experience design academy that is in charge to organize all the uh, ux talk the ux talk are uh, followed and uh, delivered also by uh, poly design I will leave a uh, few words to Andrea just to present himself. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, helping us organizing this uh, beautiful uh, talk on this uh, very important topic. My name is Andrea Gaggioli. I am a, a professor at uh, Catholic University in uh, Psychology and Human-Computer Interaction and co-director 
of the uh, specializing master uh, in uh, user experience psychology. Okay, so uh, I will go through the presentation just to say that uh, we as a uh, experience design academy, we have a um, courses of, uh, let's say, experience design that is 80 hours for professional and we have a master in UX and psychology. Um, we start we will start the second edition of the master in january 2022 and now we are uh, enrolling uh, students we are we are uh, trying to finishing the um, well, let's say first part of the first edition and uh, we think that uh, this is a really new profile on the market and also the outcome that are emerging from the the, the students uh, uh, give us the, the, the reason that this is a, a product um, interesting to invest with. This is a shared master in between the Università Cattolica and Politecnico di Milano. And uh, this is a master that uh, uh, gives a lot of opportunity in defining a new profile. So a mixed profile in between user experience design and user experience psychology. Uh, the main objective of the master are user experience research in terms of principal methods and techniques to understanding and modeling user needs. So this comes mainly from a uh, psychological point of view and the uh, user research perspective. And then we will give, a, let's say, some practical element, theoretical and practical tool and element to design better experiences because today everyone say that is a ux ui designer but we are discussing about uh, uh, designing better experience and then we will give you also element of uh, evaluation or assessment uh, these are the main objective of the master and the master is a sort of let's say complex uh, processes where both culture and theory about psychology culture and theory about design will merge in a uh, let's say blended opportunity so we, we we start with user experience psychology principle and then we do design principle user research tools and user research practice for design creativity and soft skill for ux and ux design practices so the idea is to give to the students that will have this master a broader perspectives and also to give a um, opportunity to customize the profile uh, the, the richness of this master is the multidisciplinary aspects and also the project-based activity. So we will have uh, project work running throughout all the master. One of these is developing with the, uh, Ernest and Young that is one of the most important partners of our master in this first edition. And then a final project work. So the idea is that the people that uh, take part to the courses also have the opportunity to define a brand new portfolio and a project-based learning that is fundamental, also based on the soft skills that are connected with this project-based um, delivering a real idea in a real context with real uh, client. Uh, for the ones that are interested in uh, enrolling the master or know more about the master, there is a website of Polydesign or maybe offertaformativa.unicat.it you can reach uh, the master uh, using your uh, QR, uh, QR code. But moving to the, the topic of this evening, um, we will discuss about future of work. So I, I know that Andrea prepared some introductory, uh, let's say, reflection to share, and I will, uh, I will give the, fro the floor to, to him and uh, just to hear what is uh, thought about the, the, the topic. Andrea, can, we can't hear you. You are on mute. Oh, I, I think it's the headphone, Andrea. Maybe you should. Yeah, not yet. OK, right now. Right. No. Andrea, can I start with my with my slot, and then you can have uh, a, yeah, I, a I, 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 introduction. I, I, we will yeah, close we, it. We have a few few elements. We have a few elements, and then uh, Paolo, I will leave the floor to to you because also we defined with Andrea uh, some uh, uh, questions. Yes. Just just 
Uh, Renato, so, just let me know. I think that my part of presentation is already embedded. If not, so I will. No, no, no. I need, you, you need to share. It's better to you share the okay. your, your version. Okay. So you can see you can see the screen now. Yes, and I will keep yeah. following this question. So the idea is that uh, future of work is a sort of uh, let's say vision of the the future, and all the consultancy group are working on this, and uh, AY is one of these, but also McKinsey and many other are working on this future of work, but not only consultancy. So uh, OACD is discussing about what is needed for this future that is not only related to the topic of uh, um, smart working office working and whatever but the future of working is how the working is evolving and how the situation is changing also for people uh, we are fighting a situation where uh, as you know the request of services or the market of services is increasing and the market of manufacturing is decreasing and also we are uh, looking to a situation where there are more and more job related to the IT uh, and technological skill. And these skills are uh, perhaps missed by uh, the people. Um, so the good things is that uh, all this evolution that seems that will store some jobs to the people is uh, increasing or erasing the number of workers. So the idea is that what is needed is a better skilled and uh, a open learned process uh, to be ready to get the opportunity that this market is giving us. This is not my thought, but this is uh, this comes from the OECD <coughs> that is reflecting to this situation. What? The, um, the other question that is relevant is that uh, um, we are uh, seeing that uh, there will be a self-employment processes or maybe work from home and so on, where there are less, let's say, um, elements to support uh, these people and is needed a sort of protection in this future of work. But this protection is also connected with the idea that we are moving to a non-standard situation. So the um, work system is evolving and is evolving because uh, we think and also the OECD think that uh, there will be a new opportunity. And this new opportunity is also evident about the solution and the way all the big corporation is affecting or is uh, um, managing this period of transition. Google uh, will have no more employees in his offices until September 2021. Facebook is encouraging paying more than $2,000 in bonuses to help them to set up their home offices. Apple say that the future will be not like the same and Amazon uh, is pushing people to work remotely until next June, that is today, but also they ask to go back for three days a week. Twitter already started before the pandemic, the, the, the decentralized workforce, also Salesforce, uh, is uh, letting employees work from home until August 2021. The same is for Slack, but Slack is asking what the people like. So if they like to work uh, let's say remotely, they can. So the question is that today technology allow us to work remotely, but corporation is reflecting in which is the way, the best way to do this. And also uh, Netflix uh, said, I don't want to reopen the office until all the people is vaccinated. And Atlassian said, okay, my worker can work from everywhere because I'm, uh, let's say, um, technologically ready to do this but reflecting on what is emerging also in uh, let's say places because today we will have a, a double version or double vision of the, the, the system one coming from a consultancy AY and one coming from uh, let's say architectural studies that is um, treating the, 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 the job uh, evolution also in terms of spaces services and function uh, Google said that he will invest 7 billion in offices 
and data center. So they are asking people to stay home for today uh, or in office for today or maybe from uh, they to stay home and they will invest seven billion. So from what or for what they will invest? And also a good vision is the one that uh, Satya Nardella, CEO of Microsoft, give us that he said that uh, uh, we are moving in a hybrid vision. And I saw the hybrid vision also in uh, your uh, presentation. So what will be the future of work? And this is, in my opinion, the question that we will ask with you and the question that we will discuss also in an open session, open this question and answer session later on. So I think that the best thing is uh, <coughs> to leave the floor to Paolo to start <coughs> his uh, presentation and then Thank you very much. we can go back. So as you have seen, the process is uh, open, is wider, and there is no clear vision. So please, Paolo, tell you the vision of uh, your position, yeah. the vision of AY, and also the exactly. opportunity that you found. Okay. Exactly. Venancio, just to ask, uh, can you hear me, see me, and see my screen well? Yes, perfectly. Fantastic. We had uh, we had experienced some connection problem. I ask uh, all people to have just a refresh, and it seems to work pretty pretty well. So thank you very much uh, uh, on your side for the introduction and all the people that are connected on uh, such topics. Uh, as Venancio introduced, uh, we as Ernest Young as UI uh, have a great focus on uh, what is user experience, uh, and we are the main sponsor of this first. Uh, uh, first edition of the master. Uh, so we fully believe uh, in the necessity to uh, develop uh, new competencies, new skills, uh, and new roles uh, in, your, in the organization that are related and are driven by uh, user experience. Today, I will uh, spend uh, some time with you uh, to embody the transversality of these topics uh, because uh, I am. I think that I am uh, a pretty much incarnation of this transversality. Uh, in first place, uh, I am uh, on the side of uh, psychology. I am a psychologist, not a UX uh, uh, professional. So uh, please uh, be 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 kind if I'm not uh, too much uh, on the right technical uh, words of your of your professional world. I represent the, the other part of the master, the psychological part. Anyway, the other point that I want to highlight to you is that uh, we fully believe uh, as, as EY, as consultant, that uh, a new kind of employee experience is needed, not just for the digital native that Venancio shared with you, Google, Amazon, etc., but every kind of organization, even, even the one that are more physical than digital, uh, currently. So what we are working about here uh, is uh, something that is uh, much more than uh, digitizing the processes, is something that we uh, have called the uh, hybrid experience. Uh, and I want to share with you what, what can be the role of UX uh, in this uh, designing of a new kind of employee experience. Uh, so just some uh, uh, figures uh, to understand, or maybe not to understand, because everyone is experiencing it, but just to share with you some elements on the current scenario. We have conducted many researches on the field with many industries and many clients, and we have seen such trends. We have more than half of the employees that think after these lockdown experiences feel that a mix of in-presence and remote work uh, can create uh, even more productivity and creativity and even more a positive impact on problem solving. So we see here a positive approach uh, on mixing uh, and so having an uh, hybrid experience on the, on, the, on the daily jobs. Nine employees out of 10, so a great number here, is asking for flexibility. Uh, about the places and the times of work. So they are expecting actively that uh, the organization they work in uh, will make available remote working, smart working, and other forms of uh, flexibility. Then we have here a 65% of employees that believes that uh, once productivity 
can be measured for, from any workplace. Uh, so we have understood uh, that uh, we can be productive and that our organization can track, uh, can measure and can valorize uh, our productivity even if we are not uh, in the offices. What about the technology? And this is something that is pretty important for me. 64 of the employees we uh, research on perceive the technologies as the crucial enabler of this kind of new experiences of work. They are asking for better technology in the offices, but they are also investing some for their own offices. This, this is a current scenario, and I want to add something that many times is neglected in terms of thinking about the way we work. That is the social and emotional impact of this pandemic experience and the social disconnection that it created. You see here that many, many people, this is a, a research we conduct uh, with the UI and Microsoft, many people, 70% of workers, is are reporting that uh, they are feeling at a high or and higher level of stress uh, and a kind of a deterioration in the mental health. Uh, and this is a serious matter. This is something that we have to uh, take in account if we want to create uh, real, new, and better ways of working. 60% of workers say that they are feeling less connected to the work teams, even if they are uh, anytime connected. They are feeling that they are not so socially and human connected to the other people since they are working from, uh, from home, and since they are working in remote uh, uh, modality. Then we have kind of a 60 of Italian workers that are experiencing mixed emotion about it. The main emotion here is uncertainty, a feeling of uncertainty. Then we have also hope and vulnerability. So just to let you know that this is a special moment in time for workers. Many mixed emotion, many mixed feeling about how technology can enable, enable uh, a more productive and even more enjoyable uh, way of work, but at the same time, a kind of a social disconnection that we need to keep in mind. So maybe you are thinking, what this, does it mean about UX and the user experience competencies that you are curious or you represent or you have a job about? This is something I want to share with you. We are working on this approach, this model. I don't want to sell you anything today, but just to let you know that for us, creating these hybrid employee experiences that are much more than the dichotomy between digital or presence. This is an hybrid experience we want to create by a holistic co-design approach that orchestrates different elements. These different elements for us are in a very simple way, uh, not to lose very time here, but people, practices, and digital. When we talk about people, we are talking about the purpose, uh, the individual and organizational purpose. We are talking about culture, mindset, uh, what kind of leadership do we want to have a, a better impact on business, on productivity, but also on well-being. When we talk about practices, we are talking and we are working about converting many of these new skills, and of course, one of them is user experience, transforming these uh, new skills into new effective behaviors, because this is something that then creates uh, a strategic impact on the different scenarios that every organization works on. And then we have uh, the elements that we call the digital. So, by the label itself, it's something that picks up the digital and physical enablers that we have. Digital enablers and also spaces, we will talk it in the next chapter, in order to create social connection apps. So the future of workplaces is of course diffused because it's not just about headquarters, but it all it is something that have a you know a fear rouge that is we want to create the social connection that the humans need in order to be creative, productive, 
help to feel fine about, uh, uh, you know, uh, belong to a community, to an organization, to a firm. So what is the role of the user experience and to experience itself? When you see this scheme here, you see that uh, we have two elements that is kind of a, an hybridation of the DNA of a company. One is data, big data. I don't have the time and the focus here to talk about big data, but just to let you know that for us, uh, a new kind of, uh, uh, you know, high-performing high uh, organization is a data-driven company. You cannot neglect this uh, new business asset uh, in order to make better and faster decisions. This is data, uh, just to let you know. The other point here is experience for us. I talk many times about experiences, not user experiences, just because in my opinion and in my experience, uh, the experience itself uh, is something so much more wider than the user experience. But anyway, user experience is one of the key in order to create uh, these uh, new and uh, improved employee experiences. Why? Because we need a focus and we need new skills uh, on user experiences uh, so that all the enabler that you see here, both digital and spatial elements, uh, can uh, be perceived as something relevant and something uh, that memorable and something that have uh, an, an impact, uh, both emotional and cognitive, on our people, on our employees. So user experience is something that can valorize at their best these digital and physical assets. Same thing here, you can see when we talk about new skills, we are, uh, you know, buying many new skills. Any organization is trying to have uh, a new approach on talent acquisition, etc. User experience is one of them. Data science is one of them. There are many skills, and in the next slide, I will tell you about it. But anyway, what is the role here of user experiences? Of user experience, it is a role of accelerating the development of new skills, and as I said here, converting these skills into new effective behaviors. If we do not have, I I, I share with you a very simple, maybe stupid example, but if we do not have uh, the proper user experience applied to a training course, uh, applied to a business community, and so on and so forth, uh, these courses, these communities, etc., will not be so impactful. So we are not going to create and accelerate uh, our new practices. So user experience is very relevant when we want to have a storytelling and we want to have an impact on training, on development, uh, on everything that can make our community grow. And then, of course, uh, we get back to the people. People for me, of course, uh, I am a psychology, I am a consultant. The people for me is at the center of any transformation and all the rest is an enabler. So what's the role here in uh, reimagining the purpose, the culture and the leadership uh, uh, of our organization. What's the role of user experience uh, in, the, in the people element? The role here, here is that uh, we fully believe that user experience is one of the most relevant, rele relevant way and relevant skill to create uh, collaborative, to create uh, participated and to create diffused new, uh, you know, uh, initiatives about purpose, leadership, etc. We need to create these uh, initiatives not as uh, uh, old school uh, training experiences. We need to get our people on board and have a full and open conversation about purpose, culture, and leadership. User experience can create uh, this kind of uh, you know conversation. I see user experience uh, as a kind of an accelerator of human conversation. Last slide here is. Uh, how we are going to design this new wave, next wave of uh, hybrid working. Of course, the challenges are many. I list you here the challenges uh, because I want to give you the, the, the big picture, but then of course I will focus on the skills. We need new skills, uh, what to develop and what to invest. We need, of course, to create and redesign our new, our business models. Uh, you can see 
that uh, many of the new successful businesses are platforms. So what is all about when we talk about platform? Maybe some user experience can be useful uh, even in the business model design. And then, of course, uh, we need to reconsider and redesign the vision for our organization, the purpose of our organization. Everything that I uh, told you before, of course, if you want to support this transformation, let's call it physical transformation, we need to redesign these uh, uh, different levels of the organization. When we talk about designing, user experience is uh, so uh, so much useful for any organization. You see here the three macro phases, reflect, define, and act. This is something in which user experience can have a great role. I put here the skill companies need most in 2020. And I put it here because I want to tell you that this is already uh, this is already old. So you see here that we have, of course, soft skills like creativity, collaboration, adaptability. This is one of the main focus of my profession. But then again, we have some hard skills that are very much needed, like cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and UX design, among the others. What I want to tell you here, what I want to close my, my, my input on, is that uh, I do not believe in this uh, differentiation between the soft skills and hard skills in some case. And UX design is one of these cases. In my opinion, in uh, the way we uh, co-design the master that Anzio introduce you, that is uh, user experience psychology, UX design and any kind of uh, designing of new experiences uh, should have uh, a mixed approach of soft skill and UX design. If you do not have uh, the creativity, but have the UX design, you are not going to create uh, full engaging experiences. But all, also the other way around, if we go vertical on the UX design skills, but we do not, we do not develop creativity, collaboration uh, skills, we are not going to have a great impact. In my experience and in my opinion, the way that leader companies are moving into the future of work is to mix up these soft and hard skills and to have a focus on designing relevant experiences that, that make their employees valorized, make their employees heard and make their employees willing to collaborate. Collaboration here is key because the challenges that we are going to face and we are going to address in the next year this, uh, need a kind of a community approach. And our organization is a community of, community, of, of communities. So in my opinion, UX design is one of the winning course you want to bet on. And we demonstrate it by, uh, you know, uh, sponsorizing uh, the master that Venancio introduced to you. I will close here because uh, I, I want to let uh, space uh, to the other speaker and also to the your question and answer. Just to leave you uh, in this moment, uh, have a Google on the web space here that is uh, a global network of innovation center from EY uh, so that you can see that uh, we fully believe uh, that uh, mixing up uh, human creativity and uh, uh, technical and technological skills is the way we co-create the future of work. Uh, thank you very much for now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Paolo. I think it was uh, interesting. <laughs> and uh, thank you for all the work that you spent for the master, uh, because I know that you trust in what you said, and this is not a sort of uh, uh, commercial. And uh, really, uh, this is an hybrid perspective where, uh, let's say, soft skill and skill are contaminating each other. Each other. Um, <coughs> this is, uh, I think, the, 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 the perfect uh, welcome to, to Giacomo, just because this uh, new hybrid conversation and community of community uh, needs spaces or needs spaces that are changing faces, function, and also opportunities. So, Giacomo, wh which is your vision and how Il Prisma is uh, approaching this uh, question? And also, 
uh, interesting uh, option is the ones that discuss about digital. So this was not not defined uh, in in advance, but I think there is a linear perspective in this uh, presentation and also a lot of uh, uh, conceptual connection that the, uh, our viewer can uh, experience. Okay. Thank you, Giacomo, and uh, I leave you the floor. Thank you, thank you. Hello to everyone. I guess you see well my screen? Yeah, the screen well, but the voice is low. The voice is low? This is better? Yeah, now it's better. Yes, much more. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, of course, um, thank you uh, for the this um, easy pass <laughs> to my presentation, which uh, deals with spaces, but is very much well actually starts a little bit further away uh, in the definition of digital work digital work sphere um we uh, we talk about a lot like everyone of us i guess in this in this call in this conversation about digital but when we say digital uh, many of us think of something like this something really interactive and really uh, magical somehow but in fact what i'll be talking about today are spaces such as this which is a frictionless digital experience for professionals and personal growth, or this, which is a, a series of environments permeated by a digital platform that has the, 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 the will to change and nudge behaviors, or this, which is a touchless interactive customer center, or this, which is a space that knows exactly where you are all the time and what you want. So the thing that I, I, I I hope, I think, you may think, is why do these digital workplaces look so not digital? And the reason is that when we design digital experience, like said uh, also before, uh, technology, well, for us, technology is the last thing in our mind. We are uh, architects, we are designers, interior designers, and we are, um, we, we try to be good experience designers. We start from the experience in order to understand what kind of spaces are the best ones to answer the needs and the questions. So the point is we try to uh, create engaging frictionless experience um, and the tools that they create them is really the last thing that we have in our mind. Also because these were very, very cool um, tech, very fancy tech once and then were all uh, substituted almost or actually they, they almost disappeared under this really fan, very fancy tech and guess what this very fancy tech is an iphone 10 which is quite old now and has been substituted by this amazing iphone 13 and so on and so on so the point for us is that this device is our starting point because this device represents what digital is in our existence apart from from the the working spaces and this is very crucial because it's the is the icon, is the living proof of the fact that tech is a bare mean to actually user satisfaction and user experience. And in fact, it's very much relatable to this other device, uh, which is, uh, uh, I mean, the reason why this, this connection is, is quite clear is that uh, if we think of handling our phone and our pin to someone, I don't know, to someone, to a passerby that we have uh, besides us now, this provokes some strong feelings like um, we, we get uncomfortable we get sad we get we feel new we, we get also scared sometimes for what our device may contain may, may may contain and this is because the device follows us everywhere listens to anything reads everything sees all the images and knows basically everything and knows us much better than any other person that we have in our life so uh, we can say with a certain with a with certainty that workplace is not a place with tools and text supporting tasks, but workplace is people feeling good in these places while performing the tasks, feeling good emotionally, rationally, physically. So the beginning of our thinking is uh, is the, this banal, I guess, for for almost every one of us, uh, the Maslow pyramid of needs, pyramid of needs, which starts from the very basic needs and gets to the very more, more elaborated, complex, and cultural needs. And uh, this brings us to, to think like a UX designer, asking ourselves, what should my, my feeler, uh, my, my, um, my customer, my users feel? What should they think? What should they do? Why? How do, should they feel in relation to the others? So 
if we as architects and interior designers uh, are of course uh, dealing with architecture interior design and graphic design we now need to deal also with experience design and interaction design and behavioral sciences so it's very connected to to what was said uh, till now so this is why we prisma our payoff is design human life which is a little bit ambitious as a statement but describes well this thing that i'm trying to to convey um in particular works the worksphere business unit deals with uh, having user get engaged while performing work in the spaces of work and this brings us to a little story which uh, i wanted to start from the beginning let's say 10 years uh, ago 10 years before pandemics so there once was the workplace the only child of a like a pampered only child that always got what he wanted employees but then after like five years time have changed and the child got some siblings and they started to pop up everywhere like hell and the workplace become just one of the many places where to go and this family was called has a name as all families and it's called works fear but then COVID arrived and the family balance again was disrupted for by a, by a big disruption and one sibling became the star of this family of course the name of the sibling was home and even though not everyone loved it so much for working let's say it, it, it received some helps from from governments from the world health organization we were forced to stay home and the workplace suffered a lot but now today things really can change again because we are uh, again allowed to get out from our homes and get somewhere else to work but now um, the, the workplace has a big opportunity but also uh, has to be um, has to be ready to, to 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 get the challenge and to overcome the challenge because now everyone is thinking this why the hell should i go back to the office when i can go anywhere because digitality the digital work uh, ha allows us to work from everywhere basically potentially so why should i go back well in fact going like concrete and and tangible tangible the question is what experience for us as designers what experience will the people demand if they uh, let's say allow uh, allow themselves to go back to the office so there are of course many many uh, surveys that have been, that have been done in this in this in these years uh, like ey showed us uh, but also the observatory of the smart working uh, shows us how uh like uh companies big enterprises and employees responded answered to this question which is why should you why should you go back to the office and uh big enterprises answered for to promote a sense of belonging to foster socialization to support collaboration to soothe people's stress and to get more uh better communication and employees share uh, many of these aspects like socializing collaborating meeting people but also they they focus also on recruiting and onboarding those um let's say delicate experiences that really make the difference when we are in place and make the difference if they are made in physical presence also training and education and confronting during this growing path that we have to to deal with is very uh, differentiating in the experience that we can have in the in our activities if they are, we are together in a place that is uh, branded or alone in our scattered out in different places and in fact many people said that they would go back to the office also all the time or even uh, or 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 just some days uh, some some days during the week but very few of them said they would stay home forever now that they have the opportunity to, to go back so we elaborated a serious drive a series of drivers that allow us to think to rethink the the office and these are the drivers digital uh, the office has to be a digital digital and hybrid um place that allows many ways of working and personalized ways of working and also a, a strong connection a seamless connection with people who are not there with you the new footprint is means that a space has to change according to what i just said a change is destination desks will have less importance and support and branded spaces much more importance but not because uh, it, it doesn't have to be a, a mechanism that is a top-down decision but it's something that is clear if you try to live and to, and to experience the, the new office 
safety and sustainability has become a, a, an absolute need because every one of us needs to be reassured of safety and sustainability, especially of safety. Uh, and uh, more than, I mean, of course, the place has to be safe and, and sustainable, but more than that, also it has to be reassure us that there is a care upon these topics. And lastly, the brand dialogue is something that means that this, the space is a brand leverage, is a marketing leverage, and it has to communicate on the language of their uh, of its users, of the employees, of the st all the stakeholder stakeholders that get in touch with it, but according to the company values. So there is this balance which is hard to 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 keep, but it's fundamental in order to have a successful workplace. So just going deep in this, but not um, trying not to get to, to bore you, uh, I would just wanted to see that uh, in all these steps, in all these drivers, um, digitality and platforms and and uh, uh, hardware and software play a crucial role. For instance, in, uh, to create a digital and hybrid uh, experience in, in the workplace, there are a lot of things that were already there in place, but now has been potentiated, like booking systems, hybrid collaboration, the bring your own device policy, the indoor navigation solutions, a space analytics and the importance of space analy analytics for the managers, but also for the employees themselves. And uh, basically this social platform that connects most of the things that mo most of the other services into one, uh, one um, let's say, DNA, uh, company DNA centered uh, application. And in this kind of workplace, we imagine that basically there is a kind of framework like this where datification lays in the middle of a four uh, axis scheme where individual and community are two uh, points of view of the same experience and simplifying and enhancing are two actions that technology deals with and can, uh, can support with. The, um, in, in the workplace, uh, in the work experience. The office does, thus becomes an ecosystem, but also a place, like I said before, in the work sphere. So a node of a work sphere, which is basically what, uh, what uh, the Wave Center, as I understood it, is like. So uh, for instance, a very important thing is uh, the, the, the understanding if you want all nodes to be the same and give you exactly the same experience in order to create this familiarity sense, or instead getting differentiated one to the other in order for you to have people walking uh, and, and visiting different spaces according to their needs of the moment, their, their um, wills and their um, uh, will also to go to a certain area of the city or a certain city or a certain, a certain country for a certain reason. Talking about a new footprint, basically what happens is that in the big, uh, like uh, the 10 years ago, as I said before, uh, 10 years ago, the, the, the workspace was divided into 60%, about 60% of desk space and 40% of workspace. And now it has, it has changed a lot. Uh, the space for desks uh, was, um, became much less. And there was a, a, a different approach to the support spaces and also the creation of new space that can be used to, uh, to have a return on investment and economical return, but also to create different spaces and moments of truth of the relationship between users and the company. In terms of safety and sustainability, we have, of course, a very important uh, a series of important um, actions that uh, have been asked in the design of, of the offices. Uh, there are certification, but apart from that, well, everyone now asks or is interested in sanifiable uh, materials and wants to, uh, to create, to foster respectful behaviors because responsibility is a great task according um, talking about um, relations and talking about social psychology, uh, the, the, the responsibility that each of us has when goes around and when gets to a place that is shared with other people is a very different uh, perspective that we have to deal with when, when imagining the new offices. And of course, touchless interactions are also very important, which is looks like, maybe banal, but it's not that uh, much so because we were just starting to use a lot of interactive touch uh, screens, touch uh, devices. And now we have to uh, skip again into like towards uh, uh, another step of this evolution. 
but also safety and sustainability is also a cultural approach that that companies can have if they um let's say get to meet the people before they get into the spaces in the workspaces and for instance talking and dealing with their um, habits of mobility which can be supported in terms of electric and human powered mobility and can really foster a culture that gives everyone uh, enriches everyone in the in the uh, shared culture that they will uh, have in the in the company and with colleagues and with the brand and lately lastly sorry lastly uh, talking about the brand the brand dialogue as i said the space is a market leverage for companies to talk and to have a discussion an open or, or more or less open it depends on the on the dna of the company um, the dialogue with with its stakeholders but has we individuated four steps which can be uh, described like this like the showing moment the activation of emotions moment the generation of a sense of belonging and engagement and the fostering of new behaviors these can be like four steps that company can try to let's say uh endorse and 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 uh, act upon when dialoguing with their with their uh, stakeholders and of course uh, the first moment the first we say the first three minutes of contact are crucial to create and psychology the psychologist in this call will will uh, could uh, probably explain it much better than me but the first impression is very very important to set your bias your biases are um, towards you and towards anything that you will see and experience uh, after that. So here you see like some examples, for instance, uh, up uh, left uh, corner, Econocom, uh, this space is uh, like a showroom. This, this, this uh, stairs is made of LEDs that can change color and, and convey messages. But also here you have a self check-in. There, there are no people helping you. Well, I mean, helping, yes, but no people that have to perform the check-in, but people to offer you the human part of this digital uh, experience, which is offering you a coffee and and uh, staying with you while you wait for your get for your host to get uh, to get you. So Jenny is, a, is another example. There, this is called a non-reception welcome area. You get here. You there is there are people working, and you can talk with uh, whomever is here and is at your disposal. And Aeon instead is in this place not necessarily um, digital or particularly digital, but very punchily branded. And these are uh, moments of truth that really can set, as you can see from the difference from these different companies. Econocom is a, is a digital integrator, Sorgenia is an energy provider, and Aeon is an insurance company. Uh, the very difference uh, of, of first impact. So to go back to the beginning, those uh, four non-digital, non-digital, uh, no, non-digital uh, pictures that I showed you. Let's see where they fit in the digital experience that these four companies wanted to give to their uh, to their um, customers. So we start with Feed. Feed is not a space; it's a platform. Feed existed in as a digital platform, and now it exists as a physical part of this platform of this digital platform. This is a, a platform for growth uh, and purpose creation, and uh, basically helps you. Uh, grow your employability for those of you who are not familiar with this term it means the chance of being employed by the market and so it's very related to what was said before also um what you do in this space is tracked in your in your app in your uh, by your digital avatar and shown in a gamified way so you are in, uh, encouraged to go on also this is because uh it's it's uh, it's um like um evident to everyone that many 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 of the MOOCs the the online courses that we try to uh, to, to do and follow basically we abandon and as this is a is a is a digital platform that starts from the from the digital um, uh, environment this aspect was very important because you are quite independent in this process of growing or growth there are no like people which uh, follows you from the beginning to the end. You skip from meeting different people in each, different situations according to the, the moment in which you are in your adventure. And the first moment, uh, the, the, the entrance of this space is that that you see on the right, uh, uh, bottom right and up 
uh, upper uh, corner, which is called the edge, the edge from the outside world and to the inside world, which is this digital experience that you will, uh, will live. And this area, this edge part, is permeated by two kinds of uh, um, sensorial approaches. One rational, with information about what happens inside and why it could fit with your uh, needs, and one emotional, with voices that talks about uh, previous experiences of previous users and problems that deal with your, try to create, to create empathy with you that probably when you get here are quite scared or maybe not, uh, not very at ease or uh, at least you want to challenge yourself so you're not in your comfort zone. And this way, this way of approaching you with a color, with colors and colored uh, changing LEDs and uh, voices tries to deal with this kind of very personal and, and emotional aspect. Inside, what you get is the opposite of what is digital. As you can see, it's very hard to spot digital hardware. You can see just a couple of monitors, but basically the space is all digital, is all full of, um, of um, let's say, activators of digital experiences. In the capsule that you see uh, up here, you can, a deal with uh, an online mentor or you can uh, a remote mentor but you can also have a self assessment with a vr um, headset just alone with that uh, that uh, collects a lot of information about you and put them on your avatar on the on the platform in the uh, in the second in the in the bottom left corner you can see what we call the forge where you forge your skills and you have the proper uh, lessons and appointment with coaches and you really have the core of your educational uh, process and adventure and on the ref on the on the right side you have the arena the arena where you uh, are able to fight with your with your tools with your um, arms and what with what you learned so this all experience we imagine it as a, an adventure ex experience where the adventure is basically you and your growth Going back to the to Econocom that I showed you previously, the, the check-in is already explained, the, the, the welcome area is already explained, but you must know that this is a, an office that is also considered, used as a showroom. So it, it, there are a lot of visits during the day, every day of, of the year. This space tracks you everywhere you are. And when you are, uh, for instance, uh, when you're habilitated or you are an employee, you just get you, get, you, you walk uh, towards a door which is locked and the door opens for you, not because there is a sensor, but because you're allowed to go in. So it reads your NFT that you have on your, on your uh, badge, for instance. Once you get in, your badge and your personal device are tracked. And this if, so, can like, feel like, sounds a little bit weird, but it was all decided by the inhabitants. It was uh, uh, their big uh, scope, their big goal they had with this project. And it's very useful for security, for relationships, I mean, relationship-wise, because it allows you, for instance, to meet colleagues if they give you access to their position in the village. This is not a like a uh, one-floor uh, environment. It's a mm, pretty complex village of different environments that are scattered around an area together with uh, um, also other companies. So it's, it's quite complex. So the the location, inter internal location uh, um, service is quite important, quite useful for everyone. Also, meeting rooms recognize you and activate the content that you decided and turns on and off and, and communicate with you when you are uh, close to the end of, the, of, the, of, your, of your scheduled uh, spot or if you want to, to um, like book further uh, hours in the scheduled spot. The vending machines, too dialogue with you, recognize you, suggest you your desired snack. I mean, it can be seen a little bit uh, in, a, in a scary way, but this was all uh, decided and suggested by the population because they are digital integrators and basically they are experimenting what they sell to their uh, customers. And also because they have uh, environments that, that are dedicated to outsiders. There are uh, a co-working space, there is, there is um, desk sharing and room sharing area all uh, bookable but all without any uh, like tablets uh, check-in tablets but QR codes and here it's interesting how the the uh, shades of decisions of the interaction 
that users can have with this kind of services is very important because it makes a big difference uh, for, for the, the perception, the final perception that we have. Another, uh, the, the third project that I want to show you is this. This is a, uh, it's called the Tag Hub, is from Bain & Company. And what they do here is sharing contents and uh, uh, consultancy. But they had this, uh, let's say, uh, challenge they wanted to, did to, um, to work with together with us. And they said, uh, we want to show our normal contents, but we want to have people uh, remember that they saw these contents. They want to remember. They, they wanted people to, their users and, and clients to remember how cool the experience was. So what we did was not just filling the space with digital, but instead like creating little uh, interventions that could really make the difference. For instance, this uh, environments you see that looks maybe a lot digital is in fact very simple: it is LED lights, strip lights, and plexiglass and one sensor, the one that you have in the bathroom when you have the lights turning on. So it's very simple, but creates, creates this sense of being received and being um, like, and, 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 and of a starting dialogue that the company wants to have with you when you get in. And all these uh, sects uh, gets uh, enlightened uh, as long as you uh, walk through with them. The space, which is the one that I showed you before, this on the, on the bottom uh, right corner, is a space, is a very interactive space. But the point is that on this corner, the, the, this, uh, this one that I showed you before, you have uh, AR, an AR content uh, branded wall. The, the magic here is that it's very hard to see a retro lit lighted um, wall that is also a, an, a, an augmented reality wall that can communicate uh, different stuff. And this wall, uh, it's very, it's very, uh, I mean, very uh, useful and interesting for them, for the company, for Bain, because can also just be used as a normal wall. On the other side, you have huge screens, like 98 uh, inches screens, but instead of interaction by touching it, instead of um, uh, touch screens, we uh, decided to um, create a touchless interaction because the period is delicate and also because there is this technology, which is very banal, which is the Kinect te technology, the, the Wii technology that we all know, that is never used in, in working spaces. And why not? For probably um, reasons of, of uh, um, preciseness and of uh, uh, also the fact that all the interfaces are developed for touching the screen. In fact, what we did is developing, was developing another kind of interface. And that was a fundamental part in the user experience um, design because otherwise it would have been very hard to interact with the screen with an old kind of uh, user interfa interface, but a new kind of uh, interaction, imagine. So this is, it was very important for us to uh, make a couple of steps towards another discipline, which is not the, of course, the, not the architectural discipline, but now becomes more and more and more important for us to understand and to be able to deal with. Last project I wanted to show you was Aeon, is Aeon. Aeon uh, has eight floors and in, in these eight floors to manage all the spaces and, <coughs> sorry, in, the, in, the, in these floors, but also in the parking lots, you have one app, a classical uh, booking app. But what they did was, okay, with this app, we have a lot of book, a lot of, of information, a lot of data, a lot of information about um, people' needs and people um, uh, choices. What can we do with them? What, how can we do? How can we give them a, a positive value for the company culture and for the people living it? What we did together together with them was uh, to create a gamif gamified experience that brought people to have to change their behaviors and create virtuous behaviors. So everyone, according to their uh, level, to their hierarchic, uh, hierarchical level, they have different um, uh, advantages, av advantages of booking in rooms, in, in private offices, in collaboration rooms, in parking lots, but they can decide whether to use them or give them to someone else. And by giving them to someone else, they gain points and they gain let's say uh, other, uh, like let's say coins or points that can be spent in order to gain other services and to access to other services. And this way 
we try, we intend, and we'll see how it works, how it will work. Uh, we intend to create, um, um, let's say, uh, responsibility, responsibilization, and a, and a, and a commune and, and shared culture that people can, um, can learn and share, but around the company culture and brand DNA. And this was the, 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 the reason why I decided to show you this space, which in fact, one could say it's just a booking app. Well, it's not. It's a, it's a very, um, uh, let's say, ambitious uh, exper ex experiment of uh, changing behavior of a, of a population. So just to end, and that's the end, uh, as you could, could see, digital spaces can be very different and can respond to very different goals and can be used to give happiness, surprise, change behaviors, engage, augment relational experience, and so on. And finally, whether is the objective, the, the, they are success, successful when they finally give you a return on investment, both on human and economical capital. And that's about it.